This past weekend, I had the opportunity to go into uh, a store in the local mall here. And um, that's always an adventure, right? <laughs> but as I went into the store, I needed to speak with an employee to ask a question. And I came upon this guy who was probably uh, somewhere between 18 and 22, long hair, uh, painted nails, nose piercing, um, obviously someone who uh, just said creative person just by their appearance. And his name was Arthur. And as I started to talk to Arthur, he noticed um, that I have a tattoo here and um, he referenced an artist who is uh, associated with this tattoo and asking me, hey, it, it, are you an artist? Or are you a fan of that artist? And so we started this dialogue about art immediately and his face just lit up. And then he started to tell me about how, you know, he tried to do some visual art, but really didn't feel that great about it. And you could tell he was getting down on himself and then shifted into, but you know, I do music and, and I did some music for a friend of mine who was doing this art installation that was more sculpture based. And then he started to light up again. And as we continued just to talk, it was apparent to me that um, he had a passion for this. And he shared that, you know, he really wanted to pursue this, really wanted to go to school for this, but there were several roadblocks in the way, um, as what happens a lot of times. And he just kind of talked himself out of things. Even as we were in our conversation, he was just going on about how this really was a struggle for him. And he was really thinking about having to do the practical things, you know. Uh, many of us have found ourselves in, the, in those places and maybe continue to do so. And I really encouraged him and said, you know, as far as knowledge base, um, there's so much stuff out there on the internet and to take control of your own journey, to learn as much as you can, to create, to show up. And we just had this great conversation where uh, I just felt like it was... Um, my opportunity to step into this moment and encourage this guy and tell him, look, pursue your creativity because your soul needs it. And you could tell he was just like a sponge soaking up our conversation. And um, I, I hope that I left him encouraged. I believe I did. And um, it just was one of those chance encounters. And it reminded me again of why I always talk so much about establishing a daily creative habit. For me, it's not simply just this formula or this thing I'm trying to sell or this, you know, hot topic trend. Um, this is something that actually is my story and it helped save my life. It helped me come out of depression. It helped me find myself. It helped me find my voice as an artist. And it's the thing that keeps me coming back again and again, creating something there's always something new that you can create. There's always some new inspiration, some new problem to solve, some new way to look at something, some new thing you want to express. And that is such a wonderful thing when you can not be at odds with it, but actually embrace it and let it flow through you. Because then it not only fulfills you, but then it also starts to speak to and fulfill the people around you. It's interesting because as I've thought about the daily creative habit aspect and, you know, sometimes people say, well, I don't know that I could do something every day. Um, it's really about small deposits along the way. It's about making sure that you're consistent. And sometimes consistency may look different depending upon person to person, but it's really leaning into that. It's really engaging with that part of yourself because there's no other way that that's going to happen. No one's going to choose this for you. And I started to think about, you know, who is a daily creative habit for really, right? I mean, sometimes I, I've gotten that question that resembles that sort of. And as I started to process this more, um, these are the people who have come to mind for me and maybe even that I've been at some point in my journey and maybe you resonate with some of this. The first person is the beginner. It's the person who's, who's saying, I'm going to choose me and this part of me, this creativity, because it's important, because it's something that I want to pursue. And everything is new. Everything is um, 
a wonder. There's an awe about things. And there's a newness that also sometimes is a little bit um, maybe frustrating because there's a huge gap in what you see and what you're able to execute. Um, but that's so normal and natural as part of the process. Everyone starts as a beginner. Everyone starts in a place where they don't have the knowledge base. They don't have the skills. They don't have the habit established. And it's important to recognize that this is normal and this is part of the beginning process. You won't always be a beginner, but everyone has to start there. And that may look a little different from person to person because you know, if we're talking in the realm of like visual art or music or, or some other creative expression like that, sometimes there's a natural talent that people have, right? We recognize that, we celebrate that, but that doesn't mean that someone else can't learn certain techniques and skills. Um, as a matter of fact, I think so much of uh, the visual art that I have learned has come through repetition. It's come through practice and that is something I think we don't celebrate enough. We don't value that enough. We don't talk about that enough. The fact that we need to practice. Um, no one likes to practice. When I was learning how to play guitar, I love to practice I mean, songs that I heard on the radio or things that really resonated with me, but I didn't want to practice scales. I didn't want to practice things that seemed boring. Uh, foundational things. I wanted to just jump ahead and be like, hey, let's let's do some rock and roll. Let's do some great stuff, right? <laughs> but the problem was I needed to learn the foundations because that is what I was going to use to build upon. And so the first, first person that comes to mind for a daily creative habit is a beginner. The second person that I thought of was actually the returner. And this certainly was me. It's the person who has been away from their creativity for a long time. And something happens in them where they finally start listening to that voice inside them, that prompting, that longing, that itch that happens every so often where you're like, oh man, I remember this time in my life when I was engaging with my creativity, where I was doing this and it made me feel good and it made me feel alive it made certain things make sense to me. It gave me purpose, significance. I mean, you fill in the blank of whatever that is or was, and there's a sense of, I need to come back to that. And maybe questioning, I don't know if I can even. I don't know if this is something that was a part of me a long time ago and it has now died and that's, that was the season and we put it away and um, we just look upon that with kind of nostalgia. But I wanna say that it is very possible to come back because I'm proof of that. I spent 10 years away from my art only to come back to it and to engage in now 10 plus years of showing up every single day. So there is this ability to come back to something that either you lost, lost track of, that stopped being a priority in your life, um, returning to that place and then building on it. Even though I returned to my art, I came back to it and surpassed where I was in the past. Because in the past, I showed up and I engaged with creativity and I tried to employ certain uh, skill sets, but there was this ownership and agency over my journey and over my own voice and style that had not come and did not come until I came back to my art. And so there is this sense of when we come back to our creativity, when we allow ourselves to enter back into those places and discover new places, that something even more wonderful can happen as we engage with a daily creative habit. And then finally, the third person I thought of is the seeker. And the seeker is somebody who is actually creating. It maybe is a creative professional, uh, someone who uses their creativity on a semi-regular basis or maybe regular basis. But for whatever reason, they feel stuck. They feel like if someone were to ask them about their voice or their style coming through in their creativity, um, about that place that's the essence of who they are actually entering into the thing that they're creating, they would struggle to understand how that happens or if that can happen. Um, there's this sense of it happens for everybody else, but it hasn't happened for me. And I don't really know how or when or if that can happen for me. 
It's this sense of, I feel like there's more in my creativity, more to explore, more to do, but I don't really know where to go. And so I'm seeking. Maybe I'm seeking other creative expressions because something I had done or have been doing has become very routine. It's, it's lost its luster. Um, and it's not allowing me to be excited, to have a place to play, to experiment, to break some things, to try to figure some things out, to have this injection of new inspiration and spontaneity. Things have become a little bit too routine in uh, the creative efforts. And perhaps some of that is due to relying on it for monetary reasons, right? When you make a living from your creativity, it's a difficult thing because the thing that once brought you joy now also has to bring you a living, right? It has to bring you money. Um, that can actually squash some of your passion. That can actually attach an expectation to your creativity that um, is very difficult to navigate. So, you know, as I've talked and continue to talk to so many different people that I come across in my path, whether it's, you know, this, this guy, Arthur, who I happen to have this conversation with at the mall, or it's people online. It's uh, some moms that I know who have, you know, put their own self uh, kind of aside because of raising a family with kids and, and being a wife and a homemaker and, or having their own career. Um, and suddenly coming back to this place of, you know what, I feel like I need to rediscover who I am. I feel like I need to get back in touch with that place where I was doing these things and I was excited about this and it gave me joy, it gave me purpose, it gave me meaning. And so I've talked to some who are just waking back up to that place in them again and they're trying to figure that out. What does that look like in regards to their life right now? Um, I've talked to some other people who are more um, like retirees. You know, they've gone a career in a certain track. They chose what was more responsible, uh, more practical, if you will, and they put off their creative efforts because they were building this whole other thing. And now they've come to this point in their life where they're like retired, and they're saying, "What? What now? What next?" Um, and they perhaps have the space where they are now entering into their creativity once again and going, I put this away. This was in the closet for a long time. This was up on a shelf for a long time, but now I'm taking it back down and I'm trying to re-engage with that part of me in this season of my life now that I'm retired. What does this look like? What can this look like? And so there are so many people who, when you say, lean into your creative efforts, lean into your creativity, your passions. Um, there's, there's baggage that comes with it because of our experiences, our journeys. Um, and so wherever you are today in that, uh, I want to encourage you, lean into it. Listen to that prompting inside that is telling you that you need to create. And whether that is visual art, whether that's music, whether that's poetry, whether that's systems and content um, in a business setting. Uh, creativity can look like so many different things and we shouldn't just relegate it to what seems to be the, um, the arts, as it were, uh, in the, the obvious expressions. But creativity comes out as we live life and as we show up and it can come out in how we schedule our day and the conversations we have and how we prepare a meal in the choices that we make. Um, creativity isn't simply something that leads us to produce a piece of work. Creativity is a lifestyle. It's a choice. It is something to lean into. And that's why I'm so passionate and talk all the time about establishing a daily creative habit. Because when there's a habit there, habit simply means that we're coming back to it again and again and again. And at some point, it becomes second nature to us. It becomes something of who we are and what we do and how we show up. And no longer that thing where we feel like we have to force it or where we feel like we have to put so much effort into it um, that it's not natural for us. So 
I want to invite you, if you're not part of the Daily Creative Habit group on Facebook, go to dailycreativehabit.com and um, join the group, regardless of whatever your creative expression may be. Uh, it is people who are coming together to say, yeah, I want to choose my creativity today. And it's not going to be perfect, and I'm going to make mistakes, and I'm not always going to be consistent, but I want to lean into it. I want to establish a daily creative habit and continue to grow. Um, and also, I'm going to be doing some more content around this. I'm going to be creating some more resources around this. And so uh, I want to invite you along for the journey because I think this is something that, as I've experienced in my own life, has changed me so much and has given me uh, a certain way of looking at things. And, and I know that that's not just for me, but it's also for you. And so I want to encourage you, lean into this creative process, this creative journey, figure out today, what is it that you can do? Small daily deposits. Um, it may seem like nothing, but in the long run, it will add up. Trust me, because I'm living proof of that. So I want to encourage you deeply today Go create something.